Hello, welcome back. The title here is called Calculating Percents Using Decimals. This is part one. So if you remember, every percentage, every percentage that you'll ever see can always be written firstly by a fraction that's equivalent to that percent, but also as a decimal equivalent to that percent. In the last couple of lessons, we were calculating percents by multiplying by the fraction equivalent to get the answer. Here, we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna be multiplying by the decimal equivalent of the percent in order to get the answer. So it's going to be easier if we just explain with our first example. Let's say that we're trying to calculate 50% of 20 of something. So let's say that I have 20 pencils in my hand and I'm gonna, I tell somebody I'm gonna give you 50% of those pencils. What I'm telling you is since 0% is nothing and 100% is everything, that of what I have, then 50% is right in the middle. It is half of what I have. So you already know the answer to this problem at the end of the day. If I give away 50% of this, I'm giving away half. I'm gonna give you 10 pencils. That is a half of 20. But what we're gonna do here is do it by multiplying by the decimal equivalent. Now, if I have 50%, then what I'm basically saying is that I'm gonna take this 50% and I'm gonna convert it by writing down the, um, uh, the 50, and there's an invisible decimal after the number 50. 50%, remember, 50% means 50 out of 100. That's what it means. So 50 divided by 100. When you divide by 100, what you're doing is you're taking the 50 and you're moving the decimal two spots to the left. Remember, if you divide by 10, you move the decimal one spot to the left. If you divide by 100, you move it two spots to the left. Can you guess what would happen if you divide by 1,000? You'll move it three spots to the left. So here, 50% is 50 out of 100, which means I take 50 and I divide by 100, which just means that I take the decimal here that is always at the end of the number and I move it two spots to the left so it lands here. So what it basically is saying is that 0 0.50 is the decimal equivalent of 50%. So just like in the last lesson, we found the fraction equivalent, we multiplied by the fraction to cut it down, right? Here we're going to be just multiplying by the decimal equivalent to cut, to cut it down as well, to cut the 20 down. So let's start off by saying we have, let's say, 20 pencils in a box, and we're going to be taking 50% by multiplying by, I guess it'd probably be easier to say, 0 0.5. Notice that the answer I got was 0 0.50. I could put another zero there if I wanted to and then line it up differently, but it's just going to be easier to drop the last zero. When you have decimals, uh, here. The trailing zeros don't mean anything. 0 0.5 is the same as 0 0.50. It's the same as 0 0.5000. It's the same as 0 0.500000. So it is 0 0.50, but the trailing zero doesn't really matter. So I can just multiply by 0 0.5. All right. And so what am I going to have? Ignore the decimal. First of all, 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 2 is 10. Drop a zero. Zero times zero is zero. Zero times two is zero. And I add. I'm going to have zero, zero, one. So that's what I get. And now I have to figure out where do I put the decimal. In my problem, I only have one digit after the decimal. There are no digits after the decimal here. So I have to have the answer one digit after the decimal there. 10.0. Another way of saying that is just 10 because 10.0 is exactly the same thing as 10. So I'm just going to basically say it's exactly equal to 10, which is what we already said. 50% means half of whatever, and I'm taking half of 20, and so I know the answer is 10. So you have freedom when you're working with percents. You now know that to calculate the percentage of something, you just can multiply by the decimal equivalent, and we know how to multiply decimals. So that's an application of multiplying decimals, right? But we already learned in the last section that if you don't want to do this, you can just multiply by the fraction. In other words, I could multiply this times 1 half, because 20 times 1 half, what do you think that's going to come out to be? 20, uh, because 50% works out to be 1 half times 1 half, right? Right? 20 times 1 is 20, uh, 2 times 1 is 2, and so then what I'm going to have is 20 divided by 2, again, it's 10. So whether I decide to multiply by the fraction equivalent and get an answer, or I multiply by the decimal equivalent and get this, the answer, the answers will be the same. So you have freedom in math. Here in these lessons, we'll be multiplying by the decimal equivalent, but just in the back of your mind, know that you could do it the other way with fractions if you want. You get the same answer. So as always, first problem takes the longest. Let's crank through the rest of these guys. Let's calculate what is 25% of 32. 
let's say I have 32 chickens and I'm gonna give 25% of them away. First of all, 25%, what does that actually mean? Write the number 25 down. The decimal is here. I'm gonna move it two spots to the left, so it's gonna be 0 0.25. That's what 25% is. You take the decimal, move it two spots to the left because it's 25 divided by 100. Two spots to the left, 0 0.25. And so, we're gonna take the 32 chickens that we have, and I'm gonna multiply by, uh, I guess I'll put it as 0 0.25 here. Um, I'll write it as 0 0.25. Two, five. And I'm going to multiply like this. All right. Two times five, 10. Three times five, 15. One more, 16. So I'm just going to put the one six here. There's nothing else to carry to, so I don't have to do anything there. Drop a zero here. Two times two is four. Two times three is six. And I guess you have zero. Zero times this and zero times this is basically going to do that. nothing. I guess I could just go ahead and put zero. So I have the two times two is four and the two times three is six. And now technically you have to multiply by the zero, so you would drop two zeros here, but the zero times two would be zero and the zero times three would be zero. So really, if you have zero point something, there's no reason to multiply by the leading zero. You see it does nothing. So let's add all of these things up. These zeros give you zero, six and four give you 10, and then six, seven, eight, and then you have a zero right there. Where does your decimal go? We have two positions after the decimal in the entire problem, so I must have two positions after the decimal in my problem, and 8.00 is exactly the same thing as eight, so I'm gonna write it as eight uh, there. So if I had 32 chickens and I'm gonna give away 25% of them, then I'm giving away eight chickens. That's basically what that means. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. Let's calculate 40% of 25. So a little bit less than half because 50% will be half of this. So this is a little bit less than half of 25. So first of all, you need to recognize that 40% is going to be equal to 0 0.40. Why? Because if I take 40 and have a decimal at the end and move it one, two positions to the left, it'll be 0 0.40. So I'm going to multiply the 25 times this decimal. 25 times 0 0.40 I'll just write it as 0 0.4. You don't need the trailing zero, it's not gonna do anything, so just write it as 0 0.4 there. And then we're gonna multiply. All right, next, what are we gonna have? Five times four, let's change colors here. Five times four is 20, carry the two. Two times four is eight, nine, 10. So there's your 10. Now we're multiplying by a zero there, so we don't need to, but I'll show you one more time. You drop a zero, then zero times five is zero. Zero times two is again zero. And what are you gonna have? One, zero, zero. That's what you're gonna have. And then where does your decimal go? There's one position after the decimal in the entire problem statement. So I have one position after the decimal in my answer. And 10.0 is the same thing as 10. That's the final answer. So if I take 40% of 25, it's gonna be a little bit less than half. And so that's because half of this would be 12.5, 12 and a half. So a little bit less than that is 10. 10 is the final answer. So 40% of 25 is 10. That's what that basically means. All right. Let's take a look at problem number four. Let's calculate 16% of 150. 16% of 150. First thing you recognize is that when you actually have 16%, that's exactly the same thing as 0 0.16. How do you know? Because if you start with the decimal here and move it two spots to the left, 0 0.16 is what you get. All right, so let's calculate the number 150 and we're gonna then multiply by zero. Uh, let's do it as, sorry, let me erase the zero. I should line my numbers up a little bit. 0 0.16. And you completely ignore the decimal point, remember when you multiply decimals until the end. Six times zero is zero. Six times five is 30, carry the three. Six times one is six, seven, eight, nine goes here. Now we have to drop a zero. One times zero is zero. One times five is five. One times one is one. Now we could multiply by that leading zero, but we're gonna drop zeros and then everything multiplied is gonna give you all zeros. It's not gonna do anything. So we're gonna just stop there and we're gonna add everything up. We have a zero here, a zero here. Nine and five is 14. And then we get a two right here. 
And then where does the decimal go? We have two positions after the decimal in our entire problem. So that means we have to have two positions after the decimal in our answer. And so the answer is 24. So if I have $150 and I plan to give 16% away to my mother, I'm giving her $24. That's what that means. So 16% of 150 is equal to 24. All right. Let's move along. Let's say we're going to calculate 26% of 60. 26% of 60. Remember, 25% would be exactly one quarter of this. So it's going to be a little bit more than one quarter. The first thing to remember is that 26% is 0 0.26. Because if you have a decimal at the end, you move it two spots to the left, it's 0 0.26. So now we multiply. We take the 60 and we multiply by the percentage, but as a decimal, 0 0.26. Multiply like this. 6 times 0 is 0. 6 times 6 is 36. So you carry the 3, but there's nothing there, so just drop it down there. And now we multiply by the 2, so we drop a 0. 2 times 0 is 0, and 2 times 6 is 12. We're going to carry the 1 here. Actually, there's nothing to carry to, so we just put the 12 down here. And then now we need to multiply by a leading 0, but that's just going to add zeros everywhere, so it's not going to really do anything. So we're going to drag it down like this. 0 plus 0 is 0, then this is going to give you a 6, and this is going to give you a 5, and this is going to give you a 1. And in our problem, there are two positions after the decimal in our entire problem, so the decimal point has to come right here. So the answer is 15.60, or you could write it as 15.6, because remember, trailing zeros don't really, really add much meaning in terms of, um, in terms of decimals. 15.6 is the same thing as 15.60. So if I have 60 buffalo, uh, or that's probably not a good example. If I have uh, 60 uh, pizzas, let's say, and I'm gonna give away 26%, then I'm gonna give 15.6 pizzas away, which means 15 pizzas plus a little more than half of another pizza. That's basically what that means. All right, I don't wanna cut any buffaloes in half, so that's why we changed it to pizza. Uh, I think we only have a couple more problems. Really, this is an exercise in multiplying by decimals, essentially. Let's calculate 73 percent of eight. Seventy-three percent of eight. So fifty percent would be half of that. This is quite a bit more than half. Uh, so we know it's going to be bigger than four. You can kind of estimate the answer. It's going to probably be around five or six, something like that. I'm not totally sure. Maybe around seven even. Let's go ahead and calculate it. Seventy-three percent is, as a decimal, 0 0.73. Because if you move the decimal two spots to the left, that's what you get. Now we're going to take 0 0.73, and we're going to multiply by 8. So when you multiply, no, notice in the previous problems I did 60, the whole number times the decimal, and you can get the correct answers. Here, I'm going to take the, the decimal and multiply it by the 8. So we're do, reversing the order of the multiplication. It doesn't matter. You can multiply whatever way you want. You get the same answer. 8 times 3, 24. 8 times 7, 56. 57, 58 carry the 5, and then 8 times 0 is 8, I'm uh, sorry, 8 times 0 is 0, and then you have the 5 more, so you have 5, 8, 4. Where does the decimal go? We have two positions after the decimal in our problem, so we have to have two positions after the decimal here, 5.84. So if we had 8 pizzas, and we told them that we would give them 73% of my pizzas, then it would be uh, more than 5 pizzas, but less than 6, it would be 5.84 pizzas. That's what that uh, boils down to. All right, let's move along to 75% of 72. Now, first of all, what is 75%? It's very easy to make a decimal, 0 0.75. You just move it two spots to the left, 0 0.75. Now, we can take and multiply these numbers together, 0 0.75 times 72. Whoops, I already put a multiplication symbol there. And then we just go down here and just crank through it. 5 times 2, 10. 7 times 2, 14. One more, 15. And then 2 times 0, 0. One more is 1. Now we have to multiply by this, drop a 0. 7 times 5, 35. Carry the 3. 7 times 7, 49. Then up here, uh, 50, 51, 52. Carry the 5. And then 7 times 0 is 0, and then 5 more is 5, and then we add all of these together. 
All right, so we have zero plus zero is zero, five plus five is 10, carry that one, two, three, four, and then the five drops down. So we have five, four, zero, zero, and look in our problem, we have two uh, positions after the decimal in our whole problem, so that means we have to have five, four point zero, zero, which just means a number of exactly equal to 54. That's just a whole number of 54. So if I had 72 potatoes, and I was gonna give 75% of them away, I would be giving away 54 potatoes. That's basically what that means. All right, here is our very last problem in this lesson. So let's take a look at the following. What about 90% of uh, 37? 90% of 37. First of all, 90% is exactly equal to 0 0.90, uh, because we can start here and move it two positions to the left, 0 0.90, or you could just say 0 0.9, because the trailing zero in a decimal after the decimal point doesn't really do anything. Then we can multiply by 37. So we'll take 37, 0 0.9 multiplied like this. All right, let's crank through it. Let's say 9 times 7, 63, carry the 6. Uh, 9 times 3, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 33 drops here. And then we're multiplying by zero. So we'll drop a zero and then multiply by zero, nothing will happen. So it's three, 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 that's all we have. And we have only one position beyond the decimal, so we have to have a decimal point right here, and this turns out to be the final answer. So if I have 37, uh, let's say 37 buckets of sand, and I'm gonna give 90% of that sand away, then I'm gonna give away 33 buckets of sand plus another 0.3. So 33.3, .3, a little bit more than 33 buckets of sand is what I would be giving away. So here we have conquered the idea of calculating percents using decimal equivalents. So now you have freedom. When you calculate the percentage of something, you can multiply by the decimal equivalent to get the answer, or you can multiply by the fraction equivalent to get the answer, which is what we learned in the last lesson. I really need you to practice all of these. You can see that it's essentially just an exercise in multiplying by decimals and also interpreting the results, knowing what it, what it means. So work these yourself. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll continue building your skills with calculating percents using decimals.